Morning, everyone. I'm going to call this meeting uh, to order at 9.30 a.m. Adoption of the agenda. So the West Council, West Elgin Council hereby adopts the agenda as presented. A mover, please. Tressa and Bill. All in favor? Carried. The disclosure of any pecuniary interest. So uh, Deputy Mayor Latham has uh, uh, issued a pecuniary or filled out a form for pecuniary interest for item number five. Okay. Uh, nobody else? So I need a mover and second it for that? Oh, sir. Oh, no, uh, we no, need... we're wrong. You can yeah. call for someone to be no, chair. I'm going to be leaving the chair. And so I'd like one of council to chair the meeting in my absence. So could you please sort that one out? Thank you. So this is going to chair the meeting. Okay, so a resolution that Councillor Tellier be appointed to the chair of the meeting for item number five. Okay, so we have a mover. Bill and Michelle. All in favor, Gary. Okay, so <clears throat> Delegations. Morning, Brenda. How are you this morning? Welcome. Good morning. Good, thank you. So, Brenda, I've let you, I've made you co host, so you can share your screen if you want. Okay. Or would you rather I do it for you? It's up to you. Either way. Oh, there you go. Are you able to see my presentation now? Yes. Perfect. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for having me and congratulations to everyone on um, on the elections. This is my first opportunity to see everyone in West Elgin and I greatly appreciate the invitation. Um, I am your account manager with Municipal and Stakeholder Relations. And please excuse my cat always joins all of my meetings when I'm working from home. So um, just give you a little warning on that. Um, at MPAC, we are Ontario's property experts. Our job is to assess and classify more than 5.5 million properties across Ontario, with a combined value of more than $3 trillion. Our job in the past year, Ontario has grown by approximately 45,000 new residential homes. And in 2022, we added more than $37 billion to Ontario's assessment roles. Every municipality uses our assessments to make informed decisions about your communities, including the distribution of property taxes. Ontario's property tax system and these assessments generate approximately $30 billion in tax revenue annually. There are four key players in Ontario's property assessment and taxation system, and each has a very different role to play and also a different interest in the process. The provincial government, specifically the Ministry of Finance, is responsible for setting assessment and taxation litigation legislation, as well as policies. They also determine the education property tax rate. There is also an independent body that adjudicates appeals of MPAC's assessment, um, assessment values, which is the Assessment Review Board, or the ARB, and they also fall under the jurisdiction of the province. MPAC is an independent, not-for-profit corporation funded by all Ontario municipalities, and our role is to accurately assess and classify all properties in Ontario, and we do this in accordance and compliance with the Assessment Act and the various regulations set by the Government of Ontario. We are accountable to the province, to municipalities, and property taxpayers of Ontario through our board of directors. And our board is comprised of provincial, municipal, and taxpayer representatives that are also appointed by the Minister of Finance. Municipalities determine their budget requirements, they set tax rates, and collect property taxes to pay for municipal services. Municipalities use MPAC's assessments, and the established tax rates to distribute their tax requirement to ratepayers. And finally, property owners pay property tax bills 
and they help to set market value through ongoing property purchases and ongoing sales. Maintaining Ontario's property tax database is very important. Property data is continuously being updated so that municipal records are accurate when our municipal stakeholders are making important tax decisions. Maintaining Ontario's property tax database includes assessing new construction, additions and renovations promptly, as well responding to property owner inquiries and working with property owners to help them understand their assessment. We support municipalities. We provide Municipal Connect, where our municipal stakeholders can obtain the, their primary source of assessment related information. And as well, we work collaboratively with municipalities on projects that are important to you, such as digital building permitting and also digital um, building plans. We have statutory duties as well, such as handling requests for reconsiderations. When a property owner has um, expressed questions and would like a review of their property assessment. So the reassessment that was scheduled to occur in 2020 was postponed by the province to provide stability and certainty to Ontarians and also to enable municipalities to focus on responding to the challenges posed by the pandemic. As a result, property assessments continue to be based on a legislated valuation date of January 1, 2016. MPAC continues to update and maintain the assessment role to reflect changes to properties, as I mentioned, such as new construction and improvements to properties. For any new building or structures, MPAC determines a value as of January 1, 2016 to ensure equity when comparing to existing properties. While MPAC awaits news from the provincial government about the province-wide, the next province-wide assessment update, January 1, 2016 continues to be our legislated valuation date. And this is the fixed date to which all properties are valued. Although the assessment update does remain paused, our work continues to keep property data up to date. Property owners will receive an updated property assessment notice from MPAC if there are changes to their properties. In November, MPAC sent out almost 800,000 notices to reflect changes to properties across the province. And we sent just under 500 property assessment notices to property owners in the municipality of West Elgin. Once the province announces when the next assessment update will take place, and as well what the valuation date will be, we will let you know and then we can certainly work to have more meaningful conversations as we'll continue our work to finalize assessed values within your community. After we've assessed a property or made a change to a property, we do mail the property owner a new assessment notice and sometimes property owners do not agree with our assessed value. A property owner might connect with you to let you know that they disagree with their assessment. And it is important to remember that property assessments are not taxation. If property owners have an inquiry or have a, a question, they can ask themselves, could I have sold my property as of January 1, 2016 for the assessed value? Have they visited about my property to review the information that MPAC has on file regarding their property to ensure it's correct? Have they used about my property to conduct a comparable search on assessment values of other properties within their community? And if a property owner still disagrees with their assessment, they do have the option to file a request for reconsideration. We will review their assessment, it is free of charge. There is also the option to file an appeal with the Assessment Review Board. The fastest and easiest way to file a request for reconsideration is through either About My Property or on mpac.ca, which is our website. I just wanted to take a moment to talk about the relationship between property taxes and, and property assessments. Assessments distribute taxes. They do not determine the amount of taxes paid. 
And one of the key factors is how, not necessarily how much the assessed value of a property has changed, but rather how that assessed value has changed relative to the average change in their class, in their community. And this concept is explained in a recent toolkit that we shared with all municipalities. And as well, um, the, the toolkit, the digital toolkit is available on mpac.ca. Before I wrap up, I just wanted to share a snapshot of the local assessment base for 2023 for the municipality of West Dalgan. And this is broken down by property code. So sharing the number of properties, the total assessed value that those properties represent and the percentage of your total assessment base. In anticipation of the next assessment update, we have implemented a strategy to address a lot of the misconceptions between assessed value and taxation. And that includes all of the resources for municipalities that will ensure once the announcement is made that we are ready with the resources and support that you require. The digital toolkit that I mentioned can help municipalities, including yourselves as elected officials, and also provide support and resources to educate and inform property owners. We also have developed a brand new video, how your property taxes are calculated, based on the assessed value of your home. So thank you for having me here this morning. Um, we do encourage everyone to, to stay connected with us and also subscribe to our monthly e-newsletter, which is in touch. And that can be done through mpac.ca. And that's also where you'll find all of the digital resources and the digital toolkit available. And at any time, please feel free to reach out to me as your account manager, and my contact information is available um, on the last slide for you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for, for very informative uh, information. So I'm going to ask Council if there are any questions. Seeing none, you must have done a really good job. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to Thank see you. everyone. Bye now. Thank you. Council. So we're now at the point where we're going to do the public meeting. So the recommendation is that council proceed into a public meeting at 9.43 a.m. Pursuant to bylaw 2020. 2240 to consider the stopping up and permanently closing of a portion of O'Malley Road. He once we get to this point, okay. he can you can leave the office once you get now. enter the public meeting. So we need to move in set. Okay. Are you good with Michelle seconding? Okay. Do you want to call the meeting? Just to go ahead and open the public meeting in regards to the close of portion of O'Malley Road. Okay, so yeah. I'm just going to share my screen and show you the location of this public road. We, ha we have had signs put up across the, um, sorry, we have signs that were put up on the piece of property we're looking to close, as well as information posted in the newspaper for number of weeks so it's kind of hard to see but... it's small but they're looking to stop up and close this unopened portion of O'Malley Road um, I'm not sure if anyone has any questions there was some information uh, in everyone's packages as well and there are members of the public on. If anyone has any objections to this, this is the time to raise it. We did not receive any during the notification period, which was placed in the newspaper for two weeks. I'm not seeing anyone raise their hand. 
So, Madam Chair, if you're okay, would you like me to read the resolution? Please go yeah. ahead. Uh... So that West Elgin Council receives the report from Jana Nethercott, reclose a portion of O'Malley Road, and that West Elgin Council hereby stop up and permanently close the unopened portion of O'Malley Road allowance from Gibb Line East to the easterly limit of pro the property at 23855 Gibb Line, which is 713.044 meters in length, legally described as RDALD BTN Lot 16 and 17, Concession 2, Alderborough Township, PIN 3510802. And that West Southern Council hereby requests an appraisal be sought for the land known as the unopened portion of O'Malley Road Allowance from Gibb Line. And that West Southern Council hereby authorizes staff to enter into negotiations for the sale of said lands to adjacent property owner for roll number 3434000110440. 000 and that West Elgin Council hereby direct staff to bring forward a bylaw to permanently stop up and close the unopened portion of O'Malley Road at a future meeting of council. And that said bylaw be registered on title at the land registry office at the cost of the requester. Are you looking for a mover and a seconder? That's Michelle. And then uh, Mr. Denny is the second. Okay. And call for a vote for everybody in favor. Passed. Okay, we will let um We'll carry on. Uh, adoption of the minutes. That the minutes of the council meeting on February 24th, 2023, and the committee of the whole meeting on March 2nd, 2023, be adopted as circulated and printed. Mover, Tressa, Bill, all in favor? Carried. Business is a business arising from the minutes. Seeing none. Oh, I forgot the resolution. Anyone have anything they would like to be removed from the consent agenda? Okay, so the resolution will be that West Elgin Council hereby receives and files the consent agenda as presented. Thank you, staff. This is all passed at once, so you oh. need a mover and seconder. Okay, so if a mover and seconder, dresser, bill, all in favor? Carried. All this goes right through. Yep. So now we're on Sam. I just have to make a phrase. We're on Sam Smith. Yeah, he somehow ended up. We'll just move. There we go. We're trying to get Sam over here. He's joining the meeting now. Good morning. Morning, Sam. Welcome. Thank Can you. you carry on with your report, please? Sure. I uh, sorry, I didn't miss which one uh, you wanted me to start with. So just start with this twenty sec uh, schedule twenty two, then number eleven. That's okay. Schedule. Perfect. So this is the one that um, I'll need a, a motion just to say that it was received. Um, these are the annual reports, uh, section twenty two. Twenty two. I'll just read the the first letter. Um, or the letter that uh, starts the report. So attaches a 2022 summary report for the West Elgin distribution system for January 1st to December 31st, 2022. This report is completed in accordance with Schedule 22 of OREG 17003 under the Safe Drinking Water Act. This summary report is to be provided to the members of the West Elgin Municipal Council. Please ensure this is distributed by March 31st. Attached is also a copy of the 2022 annual report for the West Elgin distribution system required under section 11. And section 12 requires both the summary report and the annual report be made available for inspection by any member of the public during normal business hours without charge. The report should be made available for inspection at the office of the municipality or at a location that is reasonably convenient to the users of the water system. <clears throat> so the schedule 2022 the Schedule 22 report um, 
it's just a general overview of the system. Um, it has uh, the section one is the overview. Section two is a compliance. So we had no compliance issues in the system in 2022. Um, and we received a um, final inspection rating from the MECP of 100%. Um, so that required no actions. Um, and section four is the um, summary of the quantity of water supplied. <clears throat> so you can see the amount of flows that went through the system. Um, and yeah, that's about it. It's pretty pretty straightforward uh, annual report. We'll do about the resolution to receive and receive both of them at once. That's the way we've done it in the past, Sam, or do you want separate resolutions? No, that's fine. Okay. So I'll jump into section 11 um, of the annual report. Again, it's, um, it's, a, a, it's again, very general overview. This one gets into um, expenses that incurred. So we had some water main and service repairs and replacements. Uh, we had some auto flusher repairs and we had some hydrant repairs, nothing major. This one gets into the quality of water. So um, we had no issues in 2022. All our chlorine results were good. All our back T results are good. HAAs and THMs are well below the, sorry, the limits. Um, alkalinity, all that stuff is, is well within the ranges. Um, so yeah, that's uh, section 11. I'll do the resolution. Yes. If they have any questions, I'm yeah. Any questions from council? Seeing none. That West Alton Council hereby receives the report from Sam Smith Aqua regarding 2022 Schedule 22 Summary Report for the West Algon Distribution System, and that West Algon Council hereby receives the 2022 Annual Report for the West Algon Drinking System as required under Section 11 of OREG 17003. Okay, can I have a mover, please? Michelle? Seconded by Bill. All in favour? Carried. That's the end of the report, is it? Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Nice good seeing day. you both. Okay. Yes, bye. nice seeing you guys. Bye. Okay, we're going to the Mr. Mm -hmm. to welcome Rob, Mr. Brown. Um Good morning, Mr. Please, uh, Deputy Mayor. Yeah, could you could you give us your planning report, please? Certainly. Uh, the property in question here, uh, severance application E one twenty three, uh, comments to the County of Elgin, is for a surplus dwelling severance. Uh, the property is located at two one one seven nine Clacken Line. Uh, the property is on uh, both private well and individual uh, private on site septic. Uh, it's a large farm, it's 200 acres in size. Uh, the lot that's being proposed to come off of it uh, is about three acres. Uh, it is a little larger, certainly, than some lots that come off, but uh, from the aerial, you can see that the, uh, the house itself is located quite a ways back from the road uh, and the laneway that's required to support the dwelling moving forward. Uh, does tend to include um, some additional land you wouldn't normally find with uh, surplus lots, but uh, these are lands that are currently used, obviously, as the laneway to the house, so there's really no change in uh, the farm. Uh, the farm makeup, uh, we're not losing any actively farmed land, uh, maybe a little just to square the lot off, but uh, so the size of a lot uh, is not impacting uh, on the farm and is appropriate given the location. Um, the remaining acreage, obviously, we will prohibit future dwellings. The application has been reviewed in the context of both the local uh, and county OP and meets the definition of surplus under provincial policy statement. Uh, can, the standard conditions are included uh, on the property for, uh, for rezoning uh, of the remnant farm uh, and recognition of the, uh, the surplus dwelling lot. They'll go, uh, each of those will go into the appropriate zone based on the, the size or restrictions that need to be placed on the properties. Uh, so unless there's questions from council or the public uh, on this uh, particular application, that's all I have, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Any, any questions from council? Seeing none. 
The West Allen Council hereby receives the report from Robert Brown Planner regarding severance application E-123 comments to Elgin County and that West Allen Council hereby recommends approval to the Land Division Committee of the County of Elgin for severance application file E-123 subject to the lower tier municipal conditions in Appendix 2 of the report and further that West Allen Council directs administration to provide the risk report as municipal comments to the County of Elgin. Okay, can I have a mover please? Presser. Michelle, seconded. All in favour? Carried. Robert, could we go on to the next one, please? Uh, certainly. Uh, the next file, E623, uh, is also a comment to Elgin County. Uh, again, the purpose of the application is for severance of a surplus dwelling. A uh, little difference in this application here. Uh, this is one where the, uh, the owner uh, is uh, in the process of selling the farm and the dwelling is surplus to the prospective purchaser. Um, this has a municipal water supply, uh, private on-site septic. Uh, the farm itself right now uh, is just shy of 50 acres. Uh, the proposed severed dwelling uh, on the property, uh, the lot would be uh, an even one hectare or 2.47 acres. Um, again, the lot, uh, is configured in such a way uh, to recognize the uh, sort of odd uh, area of occupation, I'll call it, uh, on the property, uh, but is appropriately sized and shaped for uh, what is being proposed uh, in this location. Uh, again, uh, both the lot and the remnant farm will be rezoned to the appropriate zones uh, based on surplus uh, and prohibiting uh, any future uh, dwellings on, on the remnant parcel. There are a couple of small livestock operations that were located close to uh, the proposed severed lot. Uh, however, we did complete uh, minimum distance separation calculations uh, on information that was provided uh, on the nearest uh, livestock operation. Uh, and the severance, uh, ordinarily the severance doesn't impact on the ability to expand, uh, but we simply confirm that. Uh, as a matter of record for the report. Um, so their severance of the dwelling doesn't impact either of the small livestock operations that are nearby. Uh, the uh, severance qualifies under uh, the provincial policy definition of surplus and meets both the county uh, and local official plan policies. And unless there's questions from the public or council, that is all I have, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Okay, thank you. Is there any questions from Council on that one? Seeing none. The West Allen Council hereby receives the report from Robert Brown Planner regarding severance application E623, comments to Elgin County. And the West Allen Council hereby recommends approval to the Land Division Committee of the County of Elgin for severance application file E623 subject to the lower tier municipal conditions in Appendix 2 of this report. And further, that West Elgin Council directs administration to provide this report to municip as municipal comments to the County of Elgin. Okay, mover. Bill, Michelle, seconded. All in favour? Carried. Thank you very much. Thanks, Robert. Mr. Mohan's in the field today um, and just asked if they had any questions, um, we can let them know. I, I might be able to answer them. If not, we can get a hold of them. But. Has Council got any questions on Tom Mohan's drainage superintendent ward tender? So I'll read the report or read the recommendation then. The West Elgin Council hereby receives the report from Tom Mohan, drainage superintendent, Reaward DK Andrews Dane tender and the West Elgin Council hereby awards the tender to the lowest bidder McNally Excavating Limited, Limited in the amount of one hundred and twelve thousand nine hundred dollars plus applicable taxes. Okay, a mover, please. Shell. Presser. All in favour. Carried. So these are mm. a bunch of apportionment of drains. It's kind of just a. Uh, it's. They're often conditions of severances, so um, we just have to get council's approval to apportion. Basically, we're apportioning the um, maintenance schedules and and payment schedules for them as per the new sizes of lots. I don't know if anyone has any questions. Any questions? 
We're just doing a little catch up of them. So West Elgin Council hereby receives a report from Janet Nethercock Clerk regarding apportionment of drain assessments for drains due to severance of land pursuant to Section 65.2 of the Drainage Act. And West Elgin Council hereby approves the apportionment of the drainage assessment agreement for the Garlic Municipal Drain as part of severance E5922. And that West Elgin Council hereby approves the apportionment of the drainage assessment for the Hampton Municipal Drain as part of severance E6721. And the apportionment of the drainage assessment for the head municipal drain as part of severance E3721. And the West Elgin Council hereby approves the apportionment of the drainage assessment agreement. I'm sorry. For the Crump <laughs> Municipal Drain as part of severance E6721. And West Elgin Council hereby approves the apportionment of the drainage assessment agreement for the Lusty and McKenzie Municipal Drains as part of the severance E7522 as presented. And that West Elgin Council hereby approves the apportionment of the drainage assessment agreement for the McKenzie Municipal Drain as part of severance E7522. And that West Elgin Council hereby approves the apportionment of the drainage assessment agreement for the Schweitzer Municipal Drain as part of severance E6721. After that, I will so move. <laughs> Teresa? Well, all in favor. Thank you for that. Carried. Committee and board reports. Councillor board reports from committees. Anything? Anything? I did. I, I, I've just got one. I did go to the, the lower Thames and I, I'm back on the executive committee again. Um, and I, I did have the privilege of being offered to, to go on the chair of the board, but a uh, vice chair. But I declined that one because with things we're so busy at the moment, so I couldn't take it on. Anyway, and that was about that one. Alderborough Public School. I did. I went to a meeting there, and last night, and and um, actually, they're opening the school, the new addition, on Monday for eighteen. Uh, Ch uh, children go in there and then the official opening for the, the 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 new building will be the 24th of may so i think everybody will get an invite to go to that one and the full capacity which surprised me quite a lot is with staff and everybody that looks after the small children It'll be a total of 80 in that building again it's completed so that's all i have for that one thank you Oh. The accounts, if you like. They've all looked, you've looked at Tri County Water Board minutes. Everybody okay with those? West Elgin Community Centre Board of Management minutes. I need a, do you, do you want a recommendation for that one? No, nope, they're all just there for okay. information. So we're now into accounts. Okay, so now the accounts. So that the mayor and treasurer are hereby authorized to sign payment voucher number three, amounting to $881,100.96 in settlement of general road, water, and arena accounts, including electronic fund transfers number 6396 to 6447, online payments number 1078 to 1085, check numbers 21 sorry, 26130 to 26143, and payroll for pay period four. Okay. Motion by Bill. Michelle, seconded. All in favour. Mm -hmm. It's carried. And the, the considerations of items requiring discussion. West Elgin Community Health Centre, waiver fee, waive of fees requested. So they've requested to um, use the pavilion in Miller Park for um, their stroller walks. I can read there. If you would, please. Uh, the West Elgin Council, I need to know whether you want to approve or refuse the waiver of fees. So. So. What's the opinion on council on that one, please? Anybody got any? Bill, please. Questions about that one in particular. Sure. Uh, this is not the first time that this has come. Huh. And 
and is this an ongoing weekly event? Yes. And during the good weather, they do it every week. Yes. That's it, it, the pavilion rentals. It, it wouldn't be like, that's why it's $70. It would take it for the whole, the whole week. Like, it, sorry, it'd be like a weekly event. Because I think it's $12 an hour. Yeah, once a, or once a month. Oh, okay. Yeah, the dates are like. Oh, yeah, once a month. Yep. Okay. So through, through the chair, just, yep, just because I feel it's important to get these things right. Um, uh, a few weeks ago, we. Um, uh, encouraged uh, the setting of fees for weekly um, activity at the Rodney Rec Center. Uh, in, if this was something that was exactly the same, a weekly uh, diversion of the opportunity to make revenue on the pavilion, I would say that we would have to seriously consider treating this in the same fashion as we did with the pickleball. However, I do see this as being something different. It's it's once a, once a month for, for five months. So I just want to make it clear that... Uh, as I'm looking at this as something different than the decision on the pickleball, if we were to go forward with it, uh, just so that there's good understanding from the community um, as we're discussing these things, why we would choose to uh, possibly support one and, and charge for another. Mm -hmm. I see that. And Michelle, please. I, I guess just to second Bill's point, and we had talked about this before, West Elgin Community Health Center is similar to some of our other nonprofit organizations, they're not making profit when doing these and are offering them primarily for free to the community. So I do see it as different than pickleball or shuffleboard. Okay, thank you. Do I say anything? Yeah, through the chair, I see it entirely different as well as uh, fellow council. Um, and I'm also for anything supporting the Westfield Community Health Center and the children in the community. So um, I'd, I'd be in favor of waiving the fees for the pavilion for them to meet monthly for five months. Okay, so the resolution will be that West Elgin Council hereby approve the waiver of fees request for the West Elgin Community Health Center's stroller walk and lunches in Miller Park Pavilion for the amount of $70 plus applicable taxes. Okay, can I have a mover, please? Michelle? Perfect. Seconded. All in favor. Carried. The next waiver of fee request is for the Rodney um, Horticultural Society's plant sale and the use of the Rodney Rec Center. So they will need it um, the night before for setup and as well as a half day on the day of the sale. Is that interfering with anything else that's pre-booked? No. Can we have Council? Make a motion to uh, allow that to take place and wait for these. Okay. A, a seconder, please. Or oh, did anybody else want to speak? Okay, Tressa. All in favor? Carried. The next one is a letter um, that it was, it's a request for year round use of their. The trailer park. Um, Magda just asked that we bring this into the discussion part so we could explain in case so council understands. Um, it is, it's not a straightforward, I think, as this letter makes it out to be. It's actually, it's in our zoning bylaw that uh, recreational trailer parks can be open from April 1st to October 31st. Um, and this is due to the depth of their services. Most of them don't actually have water lines that can run year round, nor septic systems that have that ability. And um, Robert's still on the meeting and we were discussing this yesterday. Um, the idea of even changing the zoning of that trailer park, should the owners of the trailer park be willing, is opens up a lot of cans of worms. Um, it, basically building code issues because recreational trailers are and travel trailers are not held to the same standard. Um, you would have to have year round uses. They don't, they're not built necessarily to be insulated properly. It is not as simple as this request um, makes it out to be. Um, 
as well as I'm not sure what the whole, I know he says there are other homes on the road that need access to the plows and they have their own plows within the park, but it, it's definitely a bigger issue than just what he's making it out to be. And it would have to be a full planning process in order to change it. I, I agree. I, I have spoke to one or two people on this subject who give me a ring. And anyway, I, I, I ex express that, like even the roadways have got to be open for the ambulances, fire service, and most of the trailers aren't winterized anyway. And and all the services come in from the bottom. So everything's going to freeze the first good frost. So, um, yeah, I agree with you entirely. Robert, have you got anything to say on this, please? No, the clerk and I discussed this a bit yesterday uh, in, in terms of what it does. And, and uh, you know, I agree it it does. Uh, it opens up a lot of considerations on this to go from from seasonal to to full on on living there. And it uh, if we did bring it forward and review it. Um, and, and I you won't hear me say this too often. It gets into a bit of a sticky situation where you could be setting a precedent and have other folks wanting to live in trailers and you know just based on our current housing pressures everybody's looking for a, a you know sort of a quick inexpensive uh solution and we've got to proceed i think cautiously on something something like this especially when it's not you know even if they can provide potable water and and establish some type of septic it just it's it's a slippery slope to get on. Okay, thank you. Any anything from council? We don't. We we've accepted that. We don't need a mover and second. Correct. Do you want to provide direction to respond to Mister Colin? Yes, I could. With their main points, okay. please. <clears throat> Okay, so we go to statements, inquiries by councillors. Yep, Bill. Through the chair, just wondering if Lee might want to mention about what happened yesterday at the uh, at the arena. Um. Um. <laughs> We're not sure if yeah. this event um, not ready to uh, yeah. to um, present that okay, to the public. Right. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good enough. <laughs> okay. Point taken. Any anyone else got anything? No. Matters of urgency. I I will give a brief update. So I. I just a quick update, as some of you will see, uh, as you remember, two years ago, uh, we had a fire here in West Lorne, and uh, there was a young lady lost her life in that fire. Uh, her sister reached out to me this week. They had a memorial bench uh, made in her honor, and they were looking for permission to place that bench out in front of the business here on Graham Road. Um, so they, as of right now, we thought that bench may have to come out onto the municipal portion of the, of the uh, sidewalk, uh, where the bench sits currently, but, um, in her speaking with the business owner, I think there's room for that bench to go right in front of the business, which would be on private property. Uh, so you'll notice that bench, I believe it's going to show up, uh, either tomorrow or the first of the week. Um, so definitely look out for it. It'll be in front of the old pizza store on Graham Road. But uh, at this point right now, we feel that uh, it's not going to involve uh, municipal property. So, Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so we go on to upcoming meetings. Just a list of some um, of the meetings coming up for of committees of council. Uh, Four Counties Transit Committee on March 14th at 8.30 a.m. The next Committee of the Whole Budget Meeting will be 9 a.m. on Thursday, March 16th. And the same evening at 7 p.m. will be the Tri-County Water Boards Meeting. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Bylaws. So this is the Phase 4 Star Safe Restart Grant Transfer 
payment agreement um, for transit system. Um, so this is, will be the bylaw is that bylaw 2023-20 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of a transfer payment agreement for the safe restart agreement phase four municipal transit funding between His Majesty the King Wright in Ontario, represented by the Minister of Transportation and the Corporation of the Municipality of West Elgin be read a first, second and third and final time. I know there's a lot of reading. <laughs> uh, can I have a mover, please, unless you've got any questions? Michelle? Mm -hmm. Pressure. All in favor, Bill. Carried. <clears throat> so we're now at the session, closed session. So, so we're going to move into a, a closed session? Yes. That West Southern Council hereby proceeds into closed session at 1016 a.m. under section 239.2 B and C. Consideration will be given to items pertaining to personal matters about identifiable individuals, including municipal or local board employee and the proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality. Mover, Teresa, Michelle, all in favor, Terry. Okay, so just give me a moment to walk down the meeting. Sorry, staff direction was given to items pertaining to matters about a pending acquisition or disposition of land by the municipality. I'm going to move or seconder. Mover and seconder for that, please. Bill, Michelle, all in favor? No. <clears throat> Carried. So we're on to the confirming bylaw. So that bylaw 2023 21 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the regular meeting of council. Held on March 9th, 2023, be read a first, second, and third and final time. Move it. Michelle. Bill. All in favor. Carry. <clears throat> so we're on to adjournment. Okay, adjournment. Council of the Municipality of West Elgin hereby adjourn at 1026 a.m. To meet again at 9 a.m. on March 16th, 2023 as Committee of the Whole and at 9.30 a.m. on March 23rd, 2023 as Council or at the call of the Chair. Move it, Teresa. Michelle, second. All in favour. Carried. Thank you very much.